Welcome to this video on inspecting and fitting a mechanical seal. This is the pump we'll be working on and what you see there is the flange which puts a pressure onto the spring of the mechanical seal and holds the parts together. That's the rear end of the pump, the shaft where the coupling fits, and here we have the bearing housing, a large green section there, it's a bearing housing. Two bearings are positioned in there to support the shaft, which is a, an overhung shaft, having the impeller positioned on the end of that shaft. First thing we're going to do is remove all of the bolts around the suction flange housing. Stripping down a job like this, make sure all of the parts are kept together, all of the nuts are put in one container. Aren't too many parts to worry about in a pump, as you'll see when we get inside it. Suction flange there in front of us. And just on the right hand side, the vertical pipe sticking up from the pump housing is the uh, discharge, just discharge port or the discharge flange. Leave one nut on the top of the uh, flange cover just to keep it in position till we're ready to take the weight and to remove it. This is a bronze pump, it's quite heavy, probably used in the food industry so that the material doesn't rust and you don't get contamination into the food product. Just removing the impeller nut, behind the impeller nut is a large washer or spacer that just holds the impeller onto the end of the shaft. Just trying to remove the washer or the spacer. And then take out the impeller. It's called a closed impeller. The veins that, uh, in the center of it are enclosed with a, a plate, if you like, on both sides, front and back. Now we're removing the gland nuts. The gland nuts are on the bolts there. We just remove all of them, then take the brass gland flange off. And that will just rele release the pressure on the spring, holding them, the mechanical seal parts in close contact with each other. Next thing we have to do is remove those bolts. There's four of them on each corner there. They're holding the pump housing, the front pump housing, onto the gland assembly and the whole bearing assembly to the major part of the pump. Again, the housing will be quite heavy.
Now what we're doing is attaching some lifting lugs onto the impeller housing. just using the studs on the pump uh, impeller housing uh, to locate the lifting lugs, the studs that are used for holding on the suction flange cover. Just attaching the overhead crane. Pump housing is a neat fit. to the rest of the pump so just need to give it a couple of knocks with a, a mallet that just releases it try not to damage the shaft or bump the housing into the shaft, damage the threads on the end of it. Just find a convenient place to position that cover while we strip down the mechanical seal. have a look at the mechanical seal and how it is assembled part by part. These are some of the pieces that have just been removed from the pump, the spring, and the cage assembly there. Just pulling off the carbon seal. Just fits in there to the seal cage. which has a rubber seal in the center of it so that it's a neat fit over the shaft. It slides tightly over the shaft. Just bringing off the gland flange there. And with the uh, ceramic seal, that's a ceramic seal sitting in there, very fragile with a rubber seal around the outside of it, which again is a neat fit into the gland flange. And those two pieces rest on each other like that, a carbon seal onto the ceramic face. What we're looking at here is a, a slinger. Most, most pumps have a slinger attached to the shaft to stop any water leakage that might come out of the pump housing and would make its way down along the shaft to prevent it from entering into the bearing housing there, just behind that slinger at the minute. The water hits the slinger and gets flung off into the pump housing. There's a drain hole on the bottom of it. The water can run out of that drain hole and be conveniently piped away if we like to a convenient drain. Just having a look at all of the parts of the seal, checking them. We would also need a good clean up before they go back into place if there is no damage to them or if we have to fit a new seal. ceramic part of the seal and the carbon part need to be handled with great care. If you were to drop them or hit them with a spanner or something, they would shatter and break. So the, that's a ceramic seal being put into the gland flange there. That's a carbon seal being fitted over the top which rests or rotates on the face of that ceramic seal. That's a carbon seal cage which is going on there that supports or holds the 
carbon seal in place. As I say, it's a tight, neat fit onto the shaft that needs to be pushed along there to prevent any water traveling along between the shaft and the seal cage. And that's a spring retainer that sits there. The spring goes on behind this. It's a spring in position there. So all of those parts are mounted onto the shaft before we lift the impeller housing back up into place again. The lock and collar goes on. It's important when you strip the pump down to note the position of that locking collar because that locking collar will provide the exact tension on the spring onto all of those parts once we tighten up the nuts onto the, on the front of the gland flange as you'll see when we uh, assemble all of the parts together again. Take care to accurately line up the housing onto the end of the shaft. You don't want to knock it against the threaded end of the shaft which holds the impeller on. Once we get it lined up in its correct position, we'll thread in, screw in the four bolts that hold it, hold the pump housing in place onto the rest of the pump. Just positioning the gland flange. Onto its holding studs there. Just run the nuts up there. Once the pump housing bolts have been tightened up and it's, the housing is in its uh, final position, when you run those nuts up, the gland will go back in and come up solid onto that uh, back end of the pump housing. When it does, that will put the correct tension uh, through the mechanical seal, ceramic and carbon uh, face seals, through them onto the spring um, and tension the spring, and that spring will give the tension between the rotating carbon face seal onto the stationary ceramic seal. And that's what gives us the dynamic seal in, in a mechanical seal in a pump.
Remove the lifting lugs. Impeller is the next part to go in. You can see the central veins on the impeller. And just there, that's where the water goes in, through that large diameter hole there. The water enters through there on the suction side of the pump and gets discharged out, out, discharged out through the veins and collected in the housing. And Collect it and discharge through the discharge flange, and discharge outlet. Just when we're fitting the impeller onto the shaft, there's a key on the shaft and a keyway in the impeller, and they have to be aligned up and fitted in position. When that is done, we get the uh, large spacer or washer behind the impeller nut and then tighten up the impeller nut securely. socket spanner on that and uh, just tighten it up then the inlet housing has to go on fit onto the array of studs around the outside of the impeller housing once we've got that in position all of the nuts can go back on again When the nuts are all hand tight, it's time to go around them with a spanner and tighten opposite nuts, for instance, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, then 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock and so on, 11 o'clock, 5 o'clock, so that we go on a cross pattern and get a nice even pull up of all of the nuts out of the flange cover onto the pump cover. Once all of that has been done, the pump is ready for installation again. Always a good idea just to turn the shaft by hand to make sure that everything is free. No binding or tight spots in it. And thank you for watching uh, this video.